Okay, so this lecture is on inheritance, another object-oriented programming uh, concept. And inheritance is basically, uh, you can say that what makes object-oriented programming uh, appealing or useful. Why? Because one uh, aspect of object-oriented programming is encapsulation that we have seen so far, meaning that you hide the implementation details. So that's called encapsulation. The other is inheritance. Inheritance basically uh, uses or is run on the concept of reuse. So reusability and encapsulation, these are the two things that make object-oriented programming, uh, you can say, better than structured programming. So reuse, by reuse we mean that we can write a class once and use its functionality multiple times by changing small things, okay? So it basically uses the concept of uh, subclasses and superclasses. And we're gonna see uh, what these things are. We're gonna talk about uh, like most of these things. Okay, so like I said, object-oriented programming inheritance is a relationship between a superclass and a subclass. What does that mean? So superclasses are generally uh, like generalized classes and subclasses are more specialized class. Example is a car is a vehicle. So you read it this way or a car is a vehicle right what about a motor mot motorcycle is that a vehicle yes it is what about a van what about a truck these are all vehicles right so any property that a vehicle has all these will have those properties now the question comes does motorbike and car have the same properties no, right? But then are there any similarities in those two uh, objects? Like a class, uh, sorry, a, a car and a motorcycle have something in common. For example, a car, car has tires, a motorcycle has tires, a car has engine, the motorcycle has engine, uh, a car has an ignition, the motorcycle has an ignition and so on. Like whatever the common functionalities are of those, they can be included or they can form the superclass. And in subclasses, you can have specializations. Okay. So in programming languages, what we say is that the subclass can inherit from the parent or the superclass. What can it inherit? It can inherit data and the methods that are defined in the parent class okay so more graphical examples so vehicle has certain properties so whatever those properties that can be common in a truck and a car or motorcycle will be included in the vehicle class then a car has four doors a motorcycle does not so doors can come here right at this level. At this level we don't need it because then a motorcycle inheriting those doesn't make sense. Then if a car has four doors, does an SUV has four doors? I mean let's say they, that we're talking about four four door SUVs. There are two doors as well similarly for car like uh, coupes but here like in the figure we are just talking about sedans and those types of SUVs. If there are coupes, then they can further maybe form another uh, subclass here, right? And so on. So the point being, as you go down, you go into more specialization, okay? So vehicle has an engine, vehicle has tires, all these three have those, okay? Motorcycle has no uh, roof or uh, doors or windows or whatever. Car has those. 
a truck may have those may not have those and so on so you can understand that coming from top so those properties that are common all these three will inherit those and then what a car is a sedan will inherit those and SUV will, will inherit those and on top of that these sub classes will have certain other properties that the parent does not have okay so that's the purpose of specialization so coming back to our concept of code reusability so you write the properties and the methods once in the vehicle class and you can use the same in all of these subclasses even an suv is a vehicle a sedan is a vehicle so any methods or uh, functions that you define for a car will be accessible in the subclasses of SUV and sedan. Okay, so that's the concept of reusability. So the question uh, example given here is that of a question. So there are different types of questions. You have fill in the blanks. You have single answer choices, multiple answer, numerics, free response, and so on. Right. True, false is I think a single answer or whatever, right? So we can create this kind of, let's say a hierarchy. That question is the parent class. Then fill in is a question. Yes, choice is a question. Numerics uh, answers are questions. Free response, they're all questions. And in choice, you can have either true, false or you can have multiple choice, let's say, right? So let's say we want to display this kind of uh, hierarchy or this kind of class structure we want to make, right? So how does inheritance do that? Or inheritance go about doing that in Python? So what is a question? A question can display its text and then check for the correct answer, okay? So we're going to define a question class and the file that we're writing this is questions.py with a small q, okay? So since question is the root or the uh, parent class, what are we doing here? So the first thing is, if you remember, is a constructor. What are we doing in the constructor? We are saying that whatever the text is, it's empty. Whatever the answer of the question is, it's empty. So both the text of the question and the answer are, we are declaring them empty, okay? Okay, so then how do you create a question for the question class? Then you have a, a method called, let's say, set text, And that accepts what? The text of the question in this variable so what's happening inside the function you're just setting this variable that you define in the instructor called text to question text whatever the user gives that what is the birth year of uh, barack obama let's say right so when it's passed in this set text question it will be uh, set to the self or whatever the object is created to that property called text okay okay so in this class so far what we have said is the question is the what's the type it's string and that's it so answer is also a string so in the parent class there is no support for numeric answers or the multiple choice answers. so numeric or choice questions are not available at this level but these two are right now the question is then how does do these two inherit from this class right well they do inherit because all the questions have a text right so why keep on repeating that in each of these why not just declare a parent class and and inherit that method of setting text and getting answers and whatever okay 
So in this case, setting text is what we write it once in the parent class, and all the child classes or children or subclasses can use that. Okay. So what's next? Okay, so this just description. So what is this doing? So this method, if you look, you're passing a response and saying that this response, this variable, which is called correct response here, is the answer of this object. What's the answer? Answer is an instance level variable. If you remember from last time, instance level and class level variables. So class level variables are defined here. Instance levels are in the constructor, meaning that you can access them only through methods for a given object that you declare. Okay, uh, so this is just setting the answer. This one is doing what? So you expect the user to give a response, right? In this variable, you pass it to this function and see whether the user's response, whatever the user gave, is equal to whatever is stored for that object in the answer uh, variable. If it is, return what? True. Otherwise, false is returned. Right? And then just a display function is used to just display the text of the question. Okay. Now look at this file. This is another file with a capital Q. Questions.py. This file is different from this file. This questions.py has the class definition in it. So what are we doing here? We are importing from that py file, import the question class. Okay. So all that code will be brought here, up here by the compiler. We won't see it, but this one line means that bring all this that's here into that uh, questions py file with a capital Q. Okay, then what are we doing? We are creating an object of that question class. So what happens when this line gets executed? When this line is executed, the constructor is called the init function, if you remember this. So what's done? The text and the answer are both declared to be empty because of that constructor call for this variable called q. So q dot text and q dot uh, answer are empty essentially. Okay. Then what are we doing? We're calling the set text function for this object, and this is the text of the question. And then you're supplying the correct answer, which is Guido Van Rossum is the uh, inventor of Python. So those things will be stored in the text and the answer variables respectively. Then we are saying calling the display function for the same object. What was in the display function? Print the text variable for this object, which is Q. We are talking about Q, right? So print self dot text. What was text? Text was this thing. So this thing will be printed on screen. Then what? You're taking the user input in this variable called response. And then you're passing that variable to the check answer function. Right? So whatever the user enters, this function is called with that variable and tested whether it's the same answer or not. If it is, true is this, uh, uh, printed, otherwise false is printed. Right? Because whatever is being returned, that will be printed. 
So if you provide the answer Guido Van Rossum, you will see true. If you provide anything else, Guido Van or something, you will see false here. Okay. So the question is, have we implemented any inheritance yet? The answer is no, we have not. Whatever we have done so far is simple object-oriented programming. We just created a class, created objects, created methods, and tested them. That's it. There has been no inheritance so far. Okay. When do we use inheritance? We need to use inheritance if we expect a variation in behavior of the sub-objects or subclasses. If you expect only a variation in values, then you use a single class. So example, if you remember from last time, our students and class example. So each student in a class has those properties, height, weight, hair color, and so on. But do we expect a student to have additional properties? No, we do not. Right? Hence, all students remain in uh, one class. Okay? Although they have different values, but remember, if you have difference or variation in values, keep them in one class. Inheritance is for variation in behavior. Now, if there is a joint class in which undergrads and grads can participate, then you may have a case for inheritance. Because now you can divide students into, with first students are human people, blah, blah. They all have the same properties, hair color. An undergrad has hair color, a grad has hair color. An undergrad has weight, a grad has weight, and so on. So you have common properties. But on top of those common properties, there is some distinction between a grad student and an undergrad student, right? So based on those, we can have inheritance. That you have a student class of which an undergrad is a member and a grad is also a member. So the student properties are inherited by both. Okay. So similarly, the example given here is that miles per gallon is only a variation in value. So hence, it should be part of the class and not part of the inheritance. Right? And again, the last important point is do not overuse inheritance because you're going to fall in trouble with that. Especially for us uh, beginning programmers. Okay.